Hey guys, welcome to VA Made Easy. Today we're going to talk about the PACT Act. I'm sure many of you have heard of the PACT Act or received a letter from the VA encouraging you to file a claim, but you're not quite sure what it does or how it works. So in this episode, I'm going to teach you about the PACT Act, how you could use it to increase your VA disability rating. The PACT Act mostly expands benefits for Gulf War or post 9-11 veterans, but it also makes it easier for Vietnam era veterans to obtain disability benefits. So stay tuned to the end of this episode and I'll tell you Vietnam era vets how the PACT Act helps you guys out as well. So several times a week I get a call from a client that goes something like this. Hey Ed, I was exposed to burn pits in Iraq. I want to file a claim under the PACT Act. Hey client, that's, that's great. I'm happy to help you out with that. Uh, so what disability do you have from the PACT Act? What, what do you mean, what disability do I have? Ed, you don't understand. When I was in Iraq, they burned everything. I was constantly exposed to black smoke. I breathed that shit in every day. Listen, guys, I, I get it. I understand. I, I was in Iraq myself. I know about the burn pits. But what you're not understanding is, in order to win your VA case, exposure to the burn pits itself is not enough. You have to have some sort of disability as well. So in other words, the VA is not going to compensate you just because you're exposed. You have to show that you also have a disability from it. So step one in your PACT Act claim, figure out what disability you want to apply for. Now the PACT Act names 24 conditions or disabilities that the VA presumes are related to burn pits. 12 of these are cancers, and 12 are mostly respiratory conditions, so asthma, bronchitis, COPD, rhinitis, sinusitis, etc. Normally, to get service-connected, you need medical evidence showing that what you're applying for is related to your service. So in other words, you need a doctor to say, oh yeah, I think, you know, Joe's... Uh, Headaches are from his exposure to burn pits, and explain why. But what the PACT Act does is the PACT Act eliminates that step. So you don't have to have medical evidence showing what you're applying for is related to the burn pits, as long as it falls under that list of presumptive conditions. If you don't have one of the conditions on the presumptive list, that's okay. The PACT Act still helps you out. And you could still get VA disability benefits. It's just a little bit harder. You're not completely out of luck. In fact, I have many clients who claim things from burn pits that are not on the presumptive list. If this is the case for you, uh, you're going to need medical evidence to help back that up. So you're going to need a doctor say there's a 50% chance that your condition is related to your exposure to burn pits. And it's definitely possible, especially if you have scientific studies to back it up. So, step one in applying for the PACT Act, identify one of the presumptive conditions. And you're going to want to obtain medical records showing you actually have that condition. The, the VA isn't going to take your word that you actually have the condition. You, you do need to produce some evidence. So, what, what do you produce? Preferably medical records that say... Yes, he has asthma, he has bronchitis, he has this cancer, something to show you have it, okay? You don't have medical records, or you've never been treated for it, there's a couple things you could do if that's, that's the case. One, go see a doctor. Go try to get diagnosed with what you think the issue is, and have that doctor put the diagnosis in your medical records. Now, another thing you could do if you do not have medical records is you could describe your symptoms of what the disability is. Now, this isn't the best way to go about it. Um, you really, to have a strong case, you need some sort of medical evidence. But if you find it's just impossible to go to the doctor and you've never been diagnosed, you can describe your symptoms, and you want to do that on a VA form 21-4138. That's just a blank form. 
you could write a statement on saying, you know, my nose is stuffed up or I have trouble breathing or whatever it may be. And if you're lucky, the VA sends you to an exam, you get diagnosed with one of the presumptive conditions and you get service connected. But like I said, get those medical records. Step one, get figure out your diagnosis and get evidence of it. If you can't get your medical records, that's fine. Did you know that the VA has something called the duty to assist? So if you got uh, treated at a VA facility, the VA could get those records on your behalf if you give them permission to. And I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later on. If you went to a private doctor, they'll also get those records for you. It's just a a little bit more involved, you got to give them a VA form 21-41-42 alpha. So complete that form if you want to a private doctor and you want the VA to get your records on your behalf. You can find it on Google, you can find VA.gov, it's, it's a pretty straightforward form. Also, uh, something I forgot to mention, the, the VA is providing these free toxic exposure screenings. So if you've never been diagnosed, you know, feel free to sign up for one of these toxic exposure um, tests at, at your nearest VA facility. They'll give you an indication if uh, you have any of the presumptive conditions. So the first thing the PACT Act does for you Gulf War post-9-11 vets is it presumes certain conditions are related to burn pits. Next, it also presumes you are exposed to burn pits. So before the PACT Act, you would actually have to tell the VA, I was stationed this place and this is where the burn pit was. And if the VA didn't have that burn pit on their list, then they would deny the claim saying there's no proof of burn pit unless you had some sort of video evidence or uh, photographic evidence or a witness backing up your claim. And they would still deny, you know, the VA. They, Deny for the stupidest reasons ever. I mean, half these people deciding the claims probably don't even know what a burn pit is. Anyways, it presumes if you're located in any of these locations on the screen on or after August 2nd, 1990, or any of these locations on or after September 11th, 2001, that you are exposed to burn pits. And it presumes that if you are in the air above any of these countries you are also presumed. So you flew above the airspace in Iraq, guess what guys? You are exposed to burn pits presumptively per the PACT Act, okay? Something to keep in mind, even though you are now presumed to have been exposed to burn pits, go ahead and tell the VA where and when you're stationed. Just don't presume that this information's in your records. I mean, it's the VA, for Christ's sake. Um, so use VA Form 2148. Just write a simple one or two sentences. I was stationed at Camp Liberty from May 05 to May 06. I was at TQ from you know May 06 to May 07, wherever it may be. Just let them know just so they could verify the information and uh, you're good to go. One, you have medical evidence of one of the presumptive conditions. Two, you served in the right time at the right place, so you're presumed exposed to burn pits. Now what do you do? Good question. So, it depends. So you've applied before and been denied. What you're going to file is a supplemental claim. And you're going to file that using VA Form 20-0995. Again, guys, all these forms are available on VA.gov. You can Google them. If you email me, I'll email them to you. The area you want to pay attention to are the boxes that ask you what your specific issue is. So what the VA is asking you here is what disability were you previously denied and what do you want them to review? So if you're denied service connection for asthma, uh, your, your issue is going to be denied service connection for asthma or whatever the disability you're disagreeing with. The date of the VA decision notice, that's the date of the last decision which you're denied service connection. So next, filing a supplemental claim involves submitting new and relevant evidence. That means you need to submit evidence that the VA hasn't considered before and that uh, can be used to prove your claim. 
So in this case, it could be almost anything, but you're going to want to make sure you have that medical evidence showing your current disability. You're going to want that statement where you're exposed to burn pits. So on that 4138, you're going to want to discuss your symptoms, how they affect you, what your treatments are, a list of your medication. And the reason you're including this information is for when you get sent to the CMP exam, the examiner can see this information and it gets you the highest rating possible. All right, two, so guys who applied before use VA form 20-0995. If you have never applied for this condition, this condition guys, not VA benefits, if you've applied for VA benefits but never this condition, then you're gonna use VA form 21-526EZ. Make sure you're using the most updated form it's a little involved, but don't worry about that. The most important parts here are putting down what your current disability is and next to that stating what your source of the injury is. So in this case, burn pits. The third box that you're going to put PACT Act, a presumptive condition, and that last box put approximately the date the disability. Guys, also... Don't forget to include your proof of diagnosis, your description of symptoms, and if you want the VA to obtain records from you or a VA from a VA facility, again, there's a box on the VA form 21-526 that allows the VA to get those forms on your behalf. Don't forget to sign your form, guys, before you send it in. The best way to file it is through va.gov. You could do this on your own, guys. You don't need to hire a VSO or attorney to file these claims, okay? So go on va.gov. If you have questions, you know, put them in the comments. I'm happy to answer them. Now, for you Vietnam era vets, I know Vietnam veterans have fought hard to get benefits for Agent Orange, meaning it's only been in the last 15 years that some of these conditions have been recognized as related to Agent Orange. And only a few years ago did the Navy veterans get fully recognized as exposed to Agent Orange. So now the PACT Act, they, it expands Agent Orange related benefits even greater. The biggest change is where the VA recognizes Agent Orange was used. For you vets who've been fighting for years and years and years and you served in Thailand and saying you, you were exposed to Agent Orange, you're in luck. Because this law changes everything for the Thailand vets. Before, you had to show that you worked along the perimeter of the base because the VA's theory was, well, Agent Orange was only sprayed on the perimeter of the base. Well, guys, you don't have to prove that anymore. If you are on a U.S. or Royal Thai military base, then you're good to go. You don't have to show exposure. It also recognizes, believe it or not, we were in Cambodia and Laos and you were exposed to Agent Orange. Yes, I know many of you have been saying for years I was in Cambodia and Laos in the VA said we had no military operations there. Well, now they're saying we have military operations there and you are exposed to Agent Orange. So the timelines are short. Uh, for Laos, December 1st, 1965 through September 30th, 1969. In Cambodia, they only recognized April 16th, 1969 to April 30th, 1969. They also added Guam, America Samoa, and Johnston Atoll as uh, places of presumptive Asian orange exposure. Now remember guys, exposure is only one portion of the equation. You also have to have a condition. So... PACT Act also gives some, adds some presumptive conditions for Agent Orange. There's already a list of, uh, I don't know, you know, about 15 or so. Go on VA.gov, check it out. But they're adding hypertension and uh, a rare condition called MGUS. So if you have one of these presumptive conditions, it's presumed related to Agent Orange. And for your Vietnam guys, you're going to file the claim in the same way. You filed before, you're using 0995. If you haven't filed, you're going to use VA Form 21-526EZ. Don't forget your evidence. 
And that does it for me, guys. I hope this was helpful. I hope you use this knowledge to win your VA case. Look forward to next time. If you have an episode idea, feel free to comment. Feel free to email me. And as always, please like and share this channel. Thanks, guys. See you next time.